Hello everyone, welcome back to Kids Club. Do you remember three weeks ago what we made in craft? Last week was castles, the week before was mice, the week before that was flaming torches. Do you remember my real flaming torch? And you made some pretend flaming torches, I hope. I saw three really good ones that people made. And I said at the time, shame we can't make the trumpets. Well, I've had a go this week at making a trumpet for you, look. And it's nice silvery colour and it's got patterns on the silvery outside. Can you see those? They're not very clear, but I can see them really quite well close up. Of course, it won't make a real trumpet noise, but I can pretend to blow down at this end by making a singing sort of sound. Let's have a go. How was that? Right. So it would be a fun thing to make if you're going to play at Gideon and his army again, or if you want to, well, play any sort of game where someone is going to be blowing a trumpet, perhaps a huntsman, or perhaps in a royal palace making an announcement. Do, do, do. Please, everybody, stand up for the king. Okay, now we're going to make one of these, and we need a piece of cereal packet. Look, we're going to make it out of this bit, but we also need one of these ends. Right, so let's cut the end off first. If you have at home the thing for drawing circles, which is called a pair of compasses, do you know how that looks? It's got a spiky end and a place to put a pencil or pen in and screw it on tight. Then you can do this without using this. But I'm going to use this and show you how it works, okay? I'm just going to fold this over to make it a bit narrower. Okay. And I'm going to help, use this to help me draw a quarter of a circle. I want it to be like that. Okay. So I'm going to find a corner. Here's a corner in my cardboard. And I'm going to show with my pen a little dot that is as long as far from the corner as this piece is long. Okay. If I want to do a quarter of a circle, I want my whole line to always be that far from the corner. So if I just keep this bit in the corner and twist it round a bit, I can draw another dot and another one. Okay. Always keep this in the corner. Now, if you have a pair of compasses and you know how to use them, it's going to do that job for you, isn't it? But this works. So let's keep going. I'm doing this just in case you haven't got a pair of compasses at home. Okay? Because if you're in the early years at school, or if you're quite young and learning at home, you probably haven't used a pair of compasses yet because they've got a very, very spiky point on them. But this cardboard can't hurt you, can it? So let's keep going with it. And then we're going to play Join the Dots. Okay? You might need a little bit of help with this. Perhaps somebody a bit older can hold that in place and you can draw all the dots, all the way around. Okay, and I've come up to the end again. Can you see, I've got the shape of a quarter of a circle. Now I'm just going to join my dots up. I always like joining up dots. I like those puzzles that are made of joining up dots. I join this up. There you are. A sort of fan shape, haven't I? And that's the bit that I want to make my trumpet with. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut out until I've got that cardboard quarter of a circle. Cut along my nice curve there that I've made with my pen. There you are. All right, now that's the shape you're going to use to make your trumpet. Okay, so I don't need this. Let's put it over there. What I do need next is a piece of this lovely shiny stuff, kitchen foil. Right, put that down with the very shiny side downwards because you want that on the outside afterwards. Okay, you want to put your fan shape down on your foil. Okay, with its nice plain side sticking up otherwise when you hold up your trumpet you will see 
an advert for cereal. You don't really want to do that, do you? There we are. My piece of foil is a little bit big, a bit bigger than I need. I only really need it to be about that much extra around the edge. So I can cut it off so it's a little bit bigger than my, than my cardboard. Tell you what, if you're doing this indoors, it's going to be a lot easier for you because I'm doing it in my garden and it's a very windy day. Right, so I don't need the rest of the foil. Let's put that over here. I'm going to blow. And then you don't really even need to glue this on. You can just fold the edges over. And foil is such a lovely thing to fold over and squish down, isn't it? Because it stays really well without you doing anything to it. See, it's windy, can't you? Things are blowing off my table. Right. And this edge, okay, this edge is a bit harder to fold over because it's not straight, it's curved. So you have to sort of tuck it down a bit as you fold it over. Okay, but it will go. Press it down as well as you can so it doesn't flap around. Okay. So now you've got a nice silver fan shape. Now, if you want some patterns on the outside of your trumpet, it's easier to do them now. Some of them will disappear when you roll your trumpet up because you're going to roll it, okay? But it doesn't really matter, okay? So put it down flat on the table with the silver side up towards you. And this is where you need something like the end of this paintbrush. I'm going to do um, a nice swirly line around the edge. Okay, so just press quite hard without going through the foil. And you see foil will keep the shape of where you press and it makes a pattern. You can do all sorts of things with this. There we go. So I have a nice swirly pattern around my trumpet. I think I'm going to do something else on it. <coughs> I think I will do some perhaps some X shapes. But you can do whatever you choose. I just want to quickly make a sort of pattern in my trumpet. What do you think, Rob? Looking okay, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I've always got Robert here to check where he thinks what I'm doing makes sense and looks okay. Can you see the pattern? Now you can have fun making a pattern all over the silver because that would be good, wouldn't it? If you were making a special trumpet, perhaps to blow when the king came into his palace, then I think you'd make it very fancy, wouldn't you? The man who made it out of metal would be very careful to carve it and put a nice design on it. I've just done my squiggly line and my X shape, so you can see that it works. It does work. You need to press fairly hard. Like I said, the end of a paintbrush is good or you might be able to do it with a pen that doesn't work anymore. That would be good. Probably not a coloured one because you'll leave little bits of inky stuff all over the foil that will come off on your hands or whatever you put it down on. End of the paintbrush was good though. But you can ask if you can't find anything. You've got something that I can press on the foil to make a shape. Now, this is where we're going to roll it up and we're going to need some tape. So let's see. How long it takes me this week to find the end of the sellotape? Oh, yeah, I think I'm doing okay. There we go. I'm going to cut myself maybe three pieces. Okay. Now, it would be nice to use rolled sellotape on the inside. I used double-sided tape, which is like that, on my one, but it is coming a bit undone. So I think if you want your trumpet to last as a trumpet, you might want to stick sellotape on the outside. Now this is where we start to curl it round, okay? Keep the corner still and roll, all right? Roll it up into a trumpet shape. Okay, that's quite a nice trumpet shape. You could make it a bit wider at the end if you want by just letting it unroll a bit. And now you want to stick some sellotape. This piece of sellotape I'm going to stick on that way. Okay, look, it's wide, so it's covering the end, but also it can tuck inside. And that will be stronger. Okay.
okay and then another piece of sellotape a little bit further back you can go on the outside it's good because the sellotape is see-through so you can still see your nice silver color and your patterns and I'm going to stick one more when you put your sellotape on don't stick it right down this end because that's where you're going to hold it up by your mouth and sellotape is not a very nice taste or smell is it so perhaps there look but that's plenty of sellotape to keep my trumpet together there it is it's finished already you could take a bit longer because you could do more patterns on it look if you wanted to you could stick nice shiny gems or something on it to make it look really special couldn't you okay there's your trumpet now it's time for music of a different kind let's do some singing let's have some exercise shall we you're ready to run on the spot because i know this is one of your favorites and one of my favorites too we're going to sing the name of the lord is a strong tower the name of the lord is a strong tower the ready you ready I know James has been fishing last week and had a good time so we're going to fish all right Jesus is going to make all his believers fishers of men I will make you fishers of men fishers of men fishers of men I will make you fishers of men if you follow Rain came down and the floods came up And the house on the rocks stood 
planets. strong and so mighty. Kids Club, we've been talking about praying, we've been talking about talking to God. And that's very important, isn't it? We've learned quite a lot about it. Do you remember Nehemiah, the man we read about last week? He knew the best thing to do, always the best thing to do when he needed to make a choice, a decision about something, or when something sad happened, or when something good happened. Best thing to do, first of all, is talk to God about it. But what about when God talks to us? Now, God has talked to us in the Bible. We call the Bible God's Word because it's the things that God wants us to know, the things that he said to us. And words are very important, aren't they? If we use a word when we're talking to someone, we need to know that they're going to understand it. Perhaps we use a word and if they don't understand, we need to explain what it means. It's very important. Words can warn us when there's a danger. If we're walking along the road and we see a child who's running towards the edge of the pavement, we might shout. What do you shout? Stop! And we hope that child would understand and that they would stop. Words can tell us about a person. We want to know what somebody's like, but we can't go and visit them. Perhaps we could send them an email or a text or a letter and say, tell us about yourself. And they could write back. And their words would tell us what they were like, even though we couldn't see them and meet with them at the moment. And that's what the Bible is like. It's God's words to us so that we know what he's like, so that we have words to tell us how to live, so that we have warnings from God about how we mustn't live and what will happen if we carry on in our sin. Okay, so we've got some words up here. I've pinned them up on my bench. Now those are all words that you've heard before, I'm sure, especially if you've been coming to kids club, Sunday school or church. Let's have a look at them. We'll read them, shall we, for the people that don't read so well. Okay. Repent, believe, Jesus, Christ, saved. Now, some of those words, who are those words? Believe, Jesus, Christ, and saved. Come into our memory verse this week. And some of you will know where this memory verse comes from, I think. I'll tell you what it is. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. 
Do you remember where that came from? It came from the story of when Paul and his friend Silas had been put in prison. And there they were, in prison. And you remember what they were doing? They weren't crying, they weren't moaning. They were praying and they were singing praises to God. They knew they could trust God, so the being in prison didn't worry them the way it worried the other prisoners in that prison. In fact, it was quiet, it was night time, and the other prisoners could listen. And so could the man in charge of the jail, the jailer. And during the night while they were there, suddenly there was an earthquake. Do you know what an earthquake is? It's when the ground shakes. Everything shakes and moves around. And the doors of all the cells in the prison flew open. And the chains that were on the prisoners' arms and legs fell off. God was doing this to save Paul and Silas from the prison. But also, he was doing it for the jailer because the jailer was so worried when he saw the, the doors open and he thought all the prisoners had run away and everybody would blame him that he took out a knife and he was going to kill himself with it. He was so sad and so desperate. And Paul said, don't hurt yourself. We're all still here. Don't worry. Everything's all right. And the jailer came out and he, he fell down at Paul and Silas's feet and he said, tell me, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? And do you remember what Paul said to him? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And the jailer understood what that meant. Do you understand what that means? Let's have a look at one of the words this week, okay? For the next few weeks, we'll look at some words that we see in the Bible a lot and make sure that we know what they mean, because it's important, isn't it? You wouldn't want to get a letter from someone and find you couldn't read it, because you couldn't understand the words. So we're going to look at this word today, this one. Okay, I'll take it down from my peg. Believe. Do you know what it means? Well, there are different ways of understanding this word, so we need to know which one Paul meant. The jailer obviously knew. He knew what Paul meant when he said it. So let's see if we do. Okay. Now, if you believe something, well, for a start, you believe it's true, don't you? So if I said, do you believe in Robert? Okay, now most of the time you don't see Robert except when he's doing the game. So do you believe that Robert has been out here in the garden with, with me this morning taking the photos and the films? Well, yes. I believe in Robert. I believe Robert is real. I believe that when he's doing the filming, that Robert is a real person and that he's really around, okay? So that's one way that I might believe in Robert. But what about if I was out on a walk in the mountains with Robert okay and Robert said I'm going to take you along this path this path is safe I might need to ask myself do I believe in Robert not do I believe he's a real person I'd be able to see him there wouldn't I with his walking boots on and his backpack with his lunch in but do I believe in him do I trust him to know what would be a good path to take in these mountains. Do you understand the difference? Okay. I believe Robert's real. We all believe Robert's real. But I'd have to say to myself, do I believe in him? Do I trust him? And that's the kind of belief that Paul meant when he talked to the jailer. And that's how the jailer understood it. Paul didn't mean believe that Jesus is a real person. Well, it was obvious Jesus was a real person. Jesus had been walking around and doing things with his friends not that long before. But he wanted the jailer to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, or as it says in some Bibles, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that doesn't mean just believe that he's real. That means 
trust him. Just like if I followed Robert up that mountain path and I trusted him, believed in him, to find the way safely along that path and back down off the mountain. So it's important we know what this word means when it's used in the Bible. We need to do what the jailer did as well. We need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ if we want to be saved. Not just believe that Jesus is real, not just know lots about him, not just say yes, I'm sure that Jesus was a very good man, but we need to trust him. We need to believe what he said about himself when he said that if we put our trust in him, we could have eternal life. We need to rely on him. So there we are. I know we've done this as a memory verse before, but let's remind ourselves of what Paul said and let's understand now what this word believe means. Not just believe that Jesus is real, but say, I will trust him. I will depend on him to save me. Because you know, that's what the jailer did, wasn't it? His life was changed. He took Paul and Silas, They'd, they had um, cuts and, and wounds where they'd been beaten. And he took them and he cared for them and looked after them because now he was trusting Jesus, believing Jesus. Jesus had said, if you care for one of my friends, then you're caring for me. That's what the jailer wanted to do. Now he knew Jesus was not just real, but Jesus was the only one who could save him. He believed in Jesus. Okay, let's try the memory verse and see if we can do it. I'm going to put believe back up, okay? I'll take down this word. Repent. That's the word we're going to do a different way. Okay, see if we can say it just from these words. You ready? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Okay, so we've got some words, we haven't got all the words, so you're gonna have to be clever, aren't you? Ready? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Well, what if we can take a word down? Um, okay, let's take this one. Okay, you ready? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be Saved. I haven't told you where it comes from, have I? It's from Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. So let's say the whole thing. Oh, we'll take another word down. Oh, let's take this one down. Ready? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be... You ready? Saved. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Take one more word down. Oh, well, we'll take this one down. Okay. What do we need to believe? Who do we need to believe on? It's a person, isn't it? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Acts 16, verse 31. The whole of the merry verse with all the words is on your quiz sheet for this week for you to colour in and you can learn it the next week. <laughs>
<laughs> is instead of captain's coming, yeah? So that's uh let's get started. <laughs> Drive the rigging, drop the deck. Oh shark attack! Shark attack! Port! Starboard! Port! Shark attack! Climb the rigging! Drop the deck! <laughs> okay, um, there's another one I forgot. Um, bombs overhead, you have to duck down and put your hands on your head. Like that, basically. Um, yeah, let's try that again. <laughs> bombs overhead! Port! Starboard! Port! Starboard! Shark attack! Climb the rigging! Slob the deck! Climb the rigging! Shark attack! <sighs> port, starboard, port, starboard, port. Uh, shark attack. Climb the rigging, stop the deck. Climb the rigging, stop the deck. <sighs> port, starboard, port, starboard, shark attack. Bombs overhead, bombs overhead, bombs overhead, bombs overhead, bombs overhead. Port, starboard, port, starboard, port, starboard, shark attack, climb the rigging, shark attack, climb the rigging, sob the deck, climb the rigging, <laughs> climb the rigging, sob the deck, shark attack, port, starboard, port, starboard. <laughs> oh, that was uh, quite hard, wasn't it? Quite fast. Um, I'm kind of out of breath now. I think we should keep going, though. Give you a second to sort of get your breath back and uh... Okay, let's go again. <laughs> Climb the rigging. Up the deck. Shark attack. Port. Starboard. Port. Starboard. Port. Shark attack. Bombs overhead. Uh, we're going to leave it there for today. But you can carry on, as always, with your family. Uh, if you've made one of these trumpets, especially, that'd be great. Okay. Also, if you make one, please do send us a photo of it because we'd love to see um, to this email address or send it to us via WhatsApp if you have us on there. Um, when we get the photos, we'll put them at the end of the video. Uh, I think we have some photos from previous weeks to show you. Also, below this video, there is a red uh, link that says Kids Club Quiz. Now, unsurprisingly, if you click that link, it will take you to the Kids Club Quiz uh, where you'll be able to fill out the quiz and uh, colour in the memory verse and that'll just be a bit of fun for you to do. Um, so if you do that, have fun, have a good week, and we will see you next week.